Well, dear friends, uh, today, uh, willingly and uh, with uh, love aforethought, I'm going to talk about the Virgin Mary, and I'm going to talk about the Virgin Birth. This is the uh, third Sunday of Advent, which we call God a Taste Sunday, which, uh, uh, which from which we get the word gaudy. Uh, you women don't look very gaudy today, but on uh, on Mary Sunday, uh, years and years ago in the church, women would dress up in their finest, and they would put on extra fir- frills and extra ribbons and extra jewels and and come to church and in fact they were just positively gaudy uh, that's where we get the word gaudy from God of taste Sunday uh, this is uh, this is that Sunday in the church and I am uh, going to talk about the uh, uh, Mary and the virgin birth and uh, I'm not even going to beat around the bush about it so in case you might be already starting to get nervous I'm going to say that I believe in it well, of course I believe in it, you would say, because it's in the Bible. Well, now, you know I'm not a fundamentalist. This is a confession before you. Some of you, uh, you, 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 you would probably say, since you're a Methodist, that you're not a fundamentalist, but some of you kind of uh, edge in, in, in that direction. And that's perfectly all right. You know, we're in a church where everybody isn't always going to agree with everybody else, but I'm not a fundamentalist. You know that there are some passages in the Old Testament, which I say do not meet muster when you compare them to the things that our Lord said. Uh, the Bible tells us some things. Uh, I, in other words, what I'm saying to you, I don't, I don't simply say, well, it's in the Bible, therefore I'm going to affirm it. The Bible speaks about the four corners of the earth. That's because the uh, author who wrote those words believed that the world was flat and therefore had four corners corners. I don't know whether you're up on the latest science or not, but it's been fairly well proven the earth is not flat and doesn't have corners of any kind. Well, hold on to your seats. I don't believe Methuselah lived 900 years. I don't believe anybody ever lived 900 years. Now, wait a minute, I'm going to get to the affirmations in just a moment. I believe that Jesus was raised bodily from the dead. I believe he's the first and the last, the Alpha and Omega. I believe he is the savior of the world. I believe he is the one and only. I believe he is the unique son of God. I believe every word that proceeded from his mouth. But I don't believe Methuselah lived 900 years. And I don't have to to be a Christian. In fact, it would be strange for me to believe that Methuselah lived 900 years because I believe what scientists find in the geological record, and they did back there and dig up a lot of people from that time, The Hebrew people at that time believed that their heroes lived a long, long time. The heroes lived a long, long time in this world. And they had to. Most people are not aware of this. But in the early phases of the Old Testament scripture, they didn't believe in much of a heaven. Really nothing like a vibrant afterlife. There may have been Sheol where you, you know, slept and languished, but you didn't get up and do much of anything. There was not much heaven, so if you were going to get anything out of life, you you got it in in two ways. One, you lived a long time in this world, say 900 years. You had to be real good, and and you lived that long as a reward for how good you've been. If you were a bad person, you could die at 23. But if you were really good, you could make it six, seven, eight hundred. If you look at the ages of folks in the old, I don't believe that. We dig people up from that time. We can test them. There weren't none of them that we dig up who lived 900 years. Now, why am I telling you all of this? I'm not the kind of person who says, well, you, you put it in there in ancient times and therefore I go with it. Jesus wasn't that kind of person either. He said, those folks in the past said to you, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But he said, that's not what I'm saying to you. I'm saying to you, love your enemies. I'm saying, tell you to forget that. Okay? This is the way I deal with Scripture. But when it comes to the New Testament and the Gospels, my affirmation changes. Of course, I affirm everything in the Old Testament that agrees with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Anything that doesn't agree with Him, I don't affirm. But it's in the context of, of my admiration for science and my acceptance of what science tells us about reality. The uh, earth is round. People don't live for 900 years. That I tell you today may turn a little red when I say this, that I believe in the virgin birth. I believe in the virgin birth because it makes sense to me. And that sounds strange too. 
But I'm also, if I'm going to take this approach to Scripture and say that everything has to make sense, I also have to explain to you why I believe in the virgin birth. I always talk to you about why I believe in the resurrection of the Lord, why I believe He's the one and only, why I believe in salvation through Jesus Christ, although the world is saved, you know. I have, I have come to the conclusion that our Lord's coming would have been like His going. And yes, this sermon is very similar to the sermon that I preached on this day last year. But I kind of look forward to talking about this with you. And this is the appropriate Sunday because this is the Sunday when we share this scripture. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town in Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed. And well, we would expect her to be. By the words and pondering what sort of greeting this could be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. For you have found favor with God. And you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you will call him Jesus Mary didn't quite believe it and the angel finally said to her you know Mary with God all things are possible and I believe that too I believe our Lord's coming was very much like his going We know more about his going than we do his coming. We know more about the resurrection than we do about the birth. Not only do Mark and John not even mention the virgin birth, the Apostle Paul never mentions the virgin birth. They don't emphasize it at all. And I'm telling you that to say that if you don't believe in it, that's okay. Simon Peter is not standing at the gate of heaven and asking you, do you believe in the virgin birth when you get there? What I'm telling you is, I think it's interesting that I can tell you today that I believe in the virgin birth because I believe that his coming was a lot like his going. And we know a lot about his going. We have the scriptural records concerning his going. And we have that... uh, Well, I decided to make... uh, to, to get a a response from one of my professors at Perkins School of Theology once. He was the professor of systematic theology. He was a German fellow. Well, he was an American now, but he had been raised in Germany. And I said, Professor, uh, there's a lot been in the news lately about the Shroud of Turin. What do you think about it? His face turned all red. And he said, that rag, that rag over there in Turin, who would believe in that rag in Turin? Well, actually, I did it just kind of for fun to provoke him, and it worked. He had no interest in that rag in Turin. Well, I have been fascinated by that rag in Turin for a number of years. If you ask the top scientists in America, whoever that might be, if he could explain that image of that man, that crucified man on the shroud, front image and back image, that scientist could not explain it. He could not tell you how it got there. Whoever that scientist is, I'm not as smart as he is. I know you already knew that, but I'm telling you. (laughs) But I can come closer to explaining that image than he could because I believe in the resurrection of our Lord. And I know that when he left this place in that tomb with that cloth laid across his body and also laid under his body I know that what happened in that tomb that night was that his body simply disappeared from that cloth. Now, 
Was it some kind of burst of radiation? What kind of thing prompted this? How did God do it physically? That I don't know. I just know that the body disappeared. We know that it, well, let's, let's talk some, it sounds like science fiction, doesn't it, to say it dematerialized? But it dematerialized. And the cloth that was covering our Lord fell down upon itself. The top fell down upon the bottom. And in that process, it recorded that image of our Lord top and bottom. As it was falling, because the resurrection took place like that, or maybe a little slower like that, because it was time for the cloth to record not only the outer image of our Lord, not only just the flesh, it also recorded the bones in his hand x-ray fashion you can see them in the image the bones of his hands of one hand which is over the other you can see the ridges in the bones that hold the teeth in place you can see that on the image because it captured that as it fell through the body and then the body was gone and it fell down upon itself and the tomb was empty and Jesus was raised, not just raised spiritually, as you and I will be, but raised completely, flesh and bone, body and sinew, all returned to spirit. You remember that funny old song? I got a dog, his name was Rose, and when he died, he died all over. When Jesus was raised from the dead, he was raised all over. All of him. And I believe his coming. like that I believe bone and sinew and flesh and blood the fetus appeared appeared in Mary's womb Robert sang a song for us last night which says, Mary, did you know? Mary, did you know that when you touch this baby's face, you touch the face of God? God, bone and sinew and flesh and blood and spirit, He had taken. Our flesh on himself and would bear in that flesh all of our burdens. He said, when you have seen me, you have seen the Father. But then you and I get pulled into this. He said, that which you do to the least of these you do also unto me. It's all connected. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and just Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Born of the Virgin Mary. And we are in awe before Him, for He is with us.
<laughs> now, will you stand as we make that affirmation together? Will you join with me? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Church universal, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.